Hello cuties! In today's video, we are finally going to H Mart. I know, it took a while, but we are here, okay? We had to start with Costco, and then we went to Trader Joe's, and now we're going to H Mart. We just like to hop around, we just like to have options, okay? It's 2021, don't get tied down. Okay, so H Mart is a Korean supermarket. They have a lot, a lot of goodies. Even though they are a Korean supermarket, they have like Japanese foods, they have Chinese foods there. If you ever walked into an H Mart, you'll know why I'm so excited and why so many people love this supermarket. It's filled with goodies. Not only is there produce, there's also like ramen and snacks, and they have a hot food section, which is what we're trying today. In today's video, we're gonna go try their hot foods for lunch. They have a lot of different grab and go items and they look so good. So I'm gonna give you a tour and then we're gonna try some of the items together. Ooh, I love it. And don't worry, uh, we will do a proper frozen foods grocery haul. So be sure you're subscribed, okay? Because that's coming, all right? Don't miss out. This is just a little teaser, you know? I'm just, I'm in a little teasing mood. Ooh, flirty and fun. <laughs> Today's food adventure is sponsored by Mudwater. So I am a coffee addict. I drink about two cups a day. <laughs> All this caffeine is actually really bad because it induces a lot of stress, anxiety. In searching for a coffee alternative, Mudwater came up. So I reached out to them and they sent me their starter kit to try for the past month. Mudwater is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. It includes ingredients such as chai, lion's mane, cacao, with huge benefits helping your mood, focus, and your immune system. It has about one seventh caffeine of a cup of coffee. You can actually drink mud all day and get the energy without impacting your sleep. I don't get any crashes from drinking this. I do notice a sense of focus, like more presence, whereas coffee, my body's kind of jittering. I actually like mine with oat milk because it makes it creamier and that tastes so much better. It's not supposed to replace the taste of coffee. It tastes like a really creamy chai to me. This is their starter kit and includes 30 serving tin of mud water, a frother, and a sample of their vegan coconut creamer. If you're also like me on a journey to consume less coffee or you're just looking for a morning ritual that's good for your mind, your soul, and your body, try mud water today and you can get 15% off their starter kit by clicking the link in description and using my code cup of tj yeah all right folks so we are at the h mart in the east village i like the h mart in east village more than the k-town one it's much more organized less chaotic because there's just so much traffic at the k-town one i'm gonna try not to film any of the staff there are a lot of people like cooking the food and putting stuff away so let's go on inside A little bit loud in here so you might hear some k-pop in the background but up here i see like the mozzarella corn dogs there's ones where it's just fish cake and then there's ones where there's mozzarella inside and it's like a fish sausage so we're gonna get one of these and then over here they have like a bunch of little snacks and goodies they have gyoza they have shumai and they have this clam chowder croquette which i was looking at that sounds so good Okay. I apologize in advance for switches and lighting. It's winter time, which means the sun sets at three basically, even though it's four, but it feels like three from my apartment. You guys ever get those like seasonal depression lamps to get the, they call it like lighting therapy. Does that work? I've gotten it before, but let me tell you, I'm not sure if it worked. <laughs> okay, so. They had a lot of like fried food goodies. They had shumai, they have gyozas, but I saw this, the mozzarella fish sausage, and I knew I had to taste it. Now, I'm going to actually heat this up in the air fryer for a little bit because when I bite into it, I want the cheese to be gooey and stretchy. Since we're air frying that, we're also going to prepare this, the clam chowder croquette. Doesn't that sound so good? Clam chowder inside fried out a layer. I'm going to air fry this up so that both this and the mozzarella stick are nice and crispy and warm. Oh my goodness, that smells amazing. Wow, gorgeous. Look at that. I'm expecting a little cheesy stretch. Here we go, let's bite into it. Mmm. Not bad. It's not bad. I think I could have heated up a little bit more because the outside was very hot, but the inside 
probably could have softened up a little bit, but overall, not bad. Very soft, nice crisp on the outside. Of course, mozzarella cheese, can't go wrong with it. I'm trying to get to the fish sausage, so give me a second. So this is what the fish sausage looks like. They actually sell packs of these that you can just like buy and eat, but that's what it looks like. Here we go. Oh, mm -mm. not a fan of that fish sausage. I know it's a fish sausage, but it's very, very fishy. Tastes like rubber in the sea. Does that make sense? <laughs> it tastes like rubber, but overall the hot dog is not bad. It does not taste even close to like freshly made corn dogs that you can get in K-Town or at those like super hyped mozzarella stick places, but uh, not bad for just, what is it, $3? $3.99, I take it back. If you're gonna spend that price, you might as well go to one of those specialty mozzarella hot dog restaurants and wait in line and grab one of those because <laughs> those are giant and really good. Clam chowder croquette. Ooh, okay. Because the uh, hot dog wasn't really like hot enough inside, I kind of microwaved this, so hopefully it's nice and gooey inside. Let's go ahead and open this up. Are y'all ready? Ah, it's so hot. So much pain, it's so hot. But I've already committed, so there we go. Oh, you got, oh my goodness. Oh, look at steamy, look at that. Ooh. Literally, clam chowder mixed with potatoes into a potato ball with a crispy outer layer. Let's see if it's good, ready? Ooh. Oh, oh, that's not bad. This is quite unique. I have never tasted a clam chowder croquette. I'm gonna have to say this is like a five out of 10, almost a six out of 10. It's not bad. It really does taste like clam chowder mixed with potato. The flavor is all there. It's just, I can't eat so much of this. This is really, really heavy. Like I don't even think I could finish the two that it comes with with the box. I can maybe take a bite, maybe share with a friend. It's almost bad in the sense that like, it's too heavy to finish. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands and we'll move on to the next item. They also have these little bento boxes. So this is like hamburger steak bento, that's what it looks like. Also have a pork katsu one. Oh, they actually have these little menu photos of everything they have in the hot food section. So they have actually quite a lot. Over here, they have a bunch of rice bowls. They have bulgogi bowl, which has japje and bulgogi inside. Beef, bulgogi. Mmm. If it's $10.99, I was really hoping for more beef. <laughs> I feel like the way they layered it, it makes it look like there's a ton of meat on top. But then as you're like picking through it, you're like, oh, it's mostly rice. Okay, but that's okay. Maybe it tastes delicious. Maybe it's the best beef in the world. Let's eat it. It smells so good. Like, it smells like they marinated this meat to perfection. Let's try this japjay on the side first. I also have a japjay recipe. Let me know if you guys want it. Yes, you do. Don't worry, I'll post it. I got you. Like and subscribe. All right, here we go. Oh, there's a japjay. It's real good. Oh. Kind of salty though. I think it's kind of salty because this rice bowl did come with like some sauce on top. I tried the beef bulgogi, but the rice bulgogi. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty dang good. <laughs> As you're flipping through it, the meat is all shredded up, and so you're thinking like, "There's no way this could taste good." But it's, it's, it's real good. Really beautifully marinated. At first, I thought it would be too salty, but it's not. Nice soy sauce flavor. Pair this with the rice. So dang good. I think they designed the perfect bulgogi bowl. There's like a good amount of beef to every um, bite of rice. So they really portioned this out well. Also, the japchae is delicious. Uh, at first, I thought it was all too salty, but now that I pair with rice, it's good. Nothing bad to say. These bowls that they have going on, good stuff. Good lunch, H Mart. Wow. I can't stop eating it. Question. What does the H and H Mart stand for? Hot Pockets, Hills, Hillary Duff, Hooters. Fun fact, everyone. The H and H Mart stands for Hanan Rum. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's a Korean phrase meaning one arm full of groceries. 
one um one arm full of groceries, Mart. Well, I certainly did come out with one arm full of groceries. How did they know? <sighs> well, none of the um my guesses were right. So, moving on. Teriyaki chicken with the fried egg, katsu don over here with like onion and egg and katsu. It looks so good. They also have a grilled salmon bowl, which looks so good. Up here, they also have like kimchi dumplings or kimchi mandus, and they have like chao shu bao's right there. Kimchi fried rice. So I got this one because it looks so pretty. Oh my goodness, I already heated it up and it has spam. Now I've been cook posting these like cooking shorts and for some reason, I think a lot of people have very strong opinion about spam. I think a lot of people don't like it, which is like, or they have never tried it before and so they just hate on it. Spam is very good, okay? But I understand how if you've never tried it before and you see that chunk of meat coming out of the can, you could be like, what's this? I see it in a lot of Hawaiian food. It's in a lot of Korean food. See right here, there's two giant pieces of spam on this kimchi fried rice. There's even little bits of spam, I think, cooked into the kimchi fried rice. Now, I have a kimchi fried rice recipe. It's very, very good. Okay, let's give this a try. I love the fried egg that came with it. It's nice and gooey. I mean, ugh, I love a gooey yolk. It looks super well seasoned. I think it's a bunch of gochujang paste and maybe some pepper. So here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's legit kimchi fried rice right there. Mmm. Hey, Smart. You got this right. Really fantastic job. Really nice seasoning on the rice. Huge kick from the pepper paste. A um, little bit of sourness coming from the kimchi. Nice crunch on the little bits of kimchi as well. Overall, very good. Very classic kimchi fried rice. This is a thumbs up for me. This is very good. And I love Spam. If you guys ever make kimchi fried rice, if you make it with Spam or if you make it with bacon, it adds a lot, a lot of flavor into the rice. And I always suggest if you're making kimchi fried rice to saute the kimchi first, brings out a lot of that flavor and then add in the rice after. For $8.99, delicious. All right, over here, there's all the gimbap. So they have like BBQ bulgogi, they have Spam crab meat, or they have the original with all the stuff. And they also have onigiri or rice rolls right here with kelp, spicy chicken, and spicy tuna inside. They're refilling more stuff because we're getting closer to lunchtime and they just put out something that I'm definitely going to try. This looks so good. This is the shrimp inari. Shrimp inari, oh my gosh. Inari is basically the tofu skin. Um, when you go eat sushi, oftentimes you see the tofu skin and there's rice inside. That's what this is, but this one is a shrimp one. And it looks like they added some sauce on it. I think the sauce on it is a mix, it's like a spicy mayo. So probably QP mayo with sriracha mixed. And there's a little bit like parsley on top. It looks so good, I'm so excited. There we go, shrimp inari, it comes with four. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Very refreshing, not too heavy. All the flavor is coming from that spicy mayo and from the savoriness of the tofu skin right here. Overall, a wonderful, refreshing bite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice thing about this HMAR is there's like a huge sushi section. The H Mart at K-Town, whenever you go, most of the sushi is gone or it doesn't look as fresh. But here, they're constantly refilling it. There are so many selection and they looked really fresh. You can actually see all of the chefs making sushi. There was like three of them making fresh sushi and gimbaps there. I didn't want to film them, but they were there and they're making fresh food. And that's why there was so much food just like churning out from that kitchen. If I do go to H Mart, I usually get the salmon filet, the sashimi grade one. If you want to make like poke bowls at home or like crispy salmon rice, sashimi, that's a great place to pick it up. I think it's about 10, 11 dollars for like a filet, which is much cheaper than getting sashimi at a restaurant. So right next to the hot food section, there's this area where the bunch of banchans. So watch, you can get like a vegetable trio banchan with seaweed, bean sprouts, you can even get soy sauce eggs, you can get steamed tofu, and this nice big container of japchae, Korean glass noodles. Oh my gosh, there's even grilled mackerel, look at this. Oh, look at that, there's so much. Up here, there's Korean omelets, there's also fish cakes, 
right here is one of my favorites. And they have a bunch of these like stir-fried anchovies. And of course, lots of kimchi. Lots of kimchi. This is like seasoned squids. You can get a bunch of stuff. Ooh, this actually looks so good. Let's get one of these. Seasoned squid. Ta-da! Okay, the banchan section is amazing. I've made a lot of um, Korean side dishes before. Don't worry, they will get posted to this channel. Check out all the shorts if you guys want to learn how to cook like your favorite Asian recipes I got you. So the one thing I did not make is the squid because to make the squid, according to a lot of the recipes online, you have to ferment the squid first and that can take, I think, a month. So you ferment the squid for a month and then you take it out, you slice it, then you coat it into all the stuff here like the red pepper powder, garlic, sugar. What I'm saying is it's really hard to actually make this, so I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that they sell it there. Um, it is quite expensive for this little one, it's $7.49. This is not the case for all the banchan, I mean the spinach and the soybean sprout should be much cheaper, but let's try this, okay? I think um, people who haven't tried this before might be a little bit scared to try it because it does have like a very slimy kind of texture, but trust, it is so good. So here we go. It kind of looks like shredded like radish or shredded daikon, but the texture is very different. Here we go. Oh, wow. This one's a little too salty for me. Oh my. I think the coating of that, very spicy. <laughs> Very spicy. But the texture of the squid is great. How do I describe it? You guys know the texture of like calamari, right? So calamari, but much softer, slimier. It doesn't have like a toughness to it or like a rubberiness to it. It's quite soft and chewy. I can see why a lot of people maybe wouldn't like the texture of this. I think this particular one is a lot more saltier than I'm used to. They're usually not this salty. Also, this one has a lot of spice. So I'm gonna say this one is uh, just okay. But fermented squid or like squid side dishes in general are very, very delicious. Don't be afraid to try it. I know the, the texture is not for everyone, but it's important to try new things. You know what I mean? Like, why not give it a try? It won't kill you unless you have a seafood allergy. Then, then it might kill you. Okay, seasoned eggs and soy sauce. For this seasoning, they have salt corn syrup, onion, jalapeno, soybean, dried pep red pepper, garlic, ginger, and sugar. I've made um, Korean marinated eggs, and the recipe is also on this channel. I'm pretty sure I posted it. Go oh, and check the shorts, okay? There's a mayak egg, Korean marinated eggs. That one's a little different because you do add Thai chili peppers and then you add honey in it. Although I think it's basically this, but they use different kind of ingredients because I do see the corn syrup and they have like the pepper jalapeno in here. Um, let's go ahead and taste it. If you make these at home, like marinated eggs at home, it's a lot better because you can make them soft boiled. So when you open it up, the center is still like soft and gooey and it's so good. I love it when the yolk is, is creamy. These look like just straight boiled eggs, probably a really hard yolk, but let's bite into it. Hopefully the seasoning's good. Here we go. Okay. Mm. They're very good. It's a very light sweetness to it. Um, not like overwhelmingly seasoned like the squid. Uh, very good. Mm. It actually tastes quite nice because the outer layer is salty, but when you bite into the yolk, it's like really creamy and grainy and it's not too flavored. So it kind of balances out that salt. Overall, pretty good. I can see myself buying a box of this and pairing with some rice and it's just nice to have on the side. Is it better than the eggs that I made? Absolutely not, you should definitely make those. So this is $7.79. I think it's a wonderful thing to have at home. You can easily buy a carton of eggs and then make like 12 marinated eggs. After you marinate the eggs, you can actually reboil that sauce and use it for other things. You can braise meat with it or you can actually put in another batch of eggs. Um, you can also put it over rice. It's very good. Anyways, check out this recipe. Yeah. So during the pandemic, I really picked up cooking because I couldn't go home and then I was homesick. And so I just made a bunch of comfort food. Like I started with recipes that were easy, like tomato stir fry, and it kind of worked my way up into other things that I was craving. Obviously I'm not a chef. I'm not, guys, I'm just a home cook, okay? I just like food. Um, but now that I know how to make a lot of the items, it makes reviewing food different for me because now I'm like, oh yeah, I know the ingredients to that or I know what's lacking in this or ooh, maybe a better version would be this. And 
So it's been nice. I hope you guys are enjoying the little cooking videos. I know it's a little different. Um, I'm like not a cooking channel, but I definitely think it adds like a lot of value to what I've been doing. And it's like a different layer now, you know? I've been doing content for five, six years now. I feel like it definitely transitioned based on like where my life is going and cooking I think is a wonderful ad and I like it. I hope you guys like it too, you know? All right, anyways, that was a rant. Just wanted to share some stuff. All right, next item. So there's this section here. It's like Korean fried chicken is so good, but it doesn't come out until around 11. So right now they're just filling some of the flavors in. Um, over here, there's also like the sundae, which is blood sausage. There's also sweet potato, more fish cake, and there's the bokki right here. It looks so good. I'm waiting until they fill this up more because I want to get one of these fried chickens. KFC. Korean fried chicken. Oh, I'm so excited. The first time I had BBQ chicken was at their K-Town location. And I walked in, I grabbed one of their original crispy wings that it's fried with olive oil. That's like their model, right? For a clean, fresh taste after or something like that. And I had it and I was like, oh my God, this is delicious. <laughs> This is so good and I love my fried chicken. It was so crispy and flaky and I just thought it was it was so dang good. And I actually like my chicken wings without sauce. However, for this video, I had to pick a flavored one because then I would just be reviewing fried chicken, okay? So I actually got their honey garlic flavor. Now I got their boneless one because I stood at the hot food section waiting and waiting and waiting for them to bring out <laughs> The, the honey garlic wings but they just did not and I just kept standing there and I think I stood there so long that the, the staff started getting very suspicious of me and they're like what is this girl doing just I was standing there like okay I wasn't standing there like that but in my head I was like like waiting for my chicken <laughs> I had to give up because I had to film you know like the reviewing part I didn't want my food to get cold it's okay because the bonus one still looks delicious now i wish you guys can smell this right now the garlic and the honey together like it's filling up my kitchen and it smells amazing it smells like heaven so according to their website the crispy chicken skin at bbq chicken is the result of a two-day prep process that includes marination battering breading and frying so there you go two-day prep i'm not sure if that's true but hey i'm gonna give it to them because it, it looks real crispy mm. That honey garlic sauce is so freaking good. Finger licking good. KFC, they're coming for you. I feel like that was a garlic bomb, but in a good way. I love garlic. Wow, that was really good. The chicken was very juicy, very tender. The outer layer, it's like, it feels like it was double fried because it's extra crispy, but it still has this airiness to it. When you bite into it, you get such a good crunch and then you're met with that juicy chicken and you get that sweet honey taste and then that garlic bomb. It's good. It's, I don't know what to say to you. It's pretty good. Now I will say with these kind of takeout box chicken, it, the quality of it might be inconsistent sometimes because it may have been sitting out for a while longer than the other ones. They started putting out the boneless first. So this was a fresh batch, so it tastes very good. I just love that it was integrated with the H Mart. Like how convenient is it? to get fresh Korean fried chicken when you go grocery shopping. It's lovely. I don't know what this is, but we're just gonna roll with it. Okay. This makes life better. They have all of the soup and stew. So there's the soybean paste, there's seafood seaweed, there's kimchi stew. And then down here is a bunch of the Korean pancakes. They have this assorted pack with all the flavors. So I think we're gonna get one of those. Okay, assorted pancakes. Look at this. <laughs> Oh, oh. <sighs> almost lit off. Okay, I already heated these up. So five different types of pancake. I believe this is the white fish pancake. This is the kimchi pancake. Um, one of them is the crab meat pancake. I think it's this one. There's like a seafood and scallion pancake. And I think this one's a regular chive pancake. <laughs> it's a pancake party. I'm going to bite into each one and tell you guys <laughs> which one I like the most. Here we go. Mmm. Oh. Oh, crunch in the kimchi. Mm, mm, mm. This is one of my favorites. I had it before. It's white fish and some batter. <laughs> I think it's delicious. I love that. Mmm. 
Oh my god, this one's so soft. Oh, this one's probably my least favorite one. Fish pancake, amazing. Kimchi pancake, so good because when you bite into it, you get a little crunch from the kimchi and it's mm, spectacular. This crab meat one, I love it. It's the fluffiest of the pancake. Wonderful savoriness from the crab meat. I think this is like the scallion chive, scallion one. Um, just really heavy on the onion flavor, so I probably, I probably skipped that one. And this one is just really, really hard. <laughs> But I'm really glad to try it all. <laughs> I'm more of a savory breakfast person. So I feel like instead of like pancakes, like sweet pancakes or syrup, I could just have Korean pancakes for breakfast. Ah! What a revelation. Okay, next, next item. <laughs> By the register, there's a bunch of drinks. I'm gonna get like one or two. I saw these ones, they look so cute. Ooh, it's a peach flavor little jellies inside and I'm gonna get one of these I think this is like a grape juice or something I don't know but it's so cute we're taking it <laughs> a little drink break yes so this is coco pan <laughs> apparently it's like I just looked it up it's a Korean juice or drink with coconut and grape flavor they're supposed to be coconut jellies inside I think that's why there's like all these little jellies floating around so let's try it. Oh, I love grape juice. Very excited. Oh, it smells like grape candy. Oh, that's the best. Grape is the best candy flavor. Fight me on that. Fight, you heard it here first. Let's go. Okay. Cheers. Boop. Oh, it's good. I would have loved this as a kid. Mmm. <laughs> the jelly is inside. I was a little worried that it could be a little sweet, but... It's honestly not too bad. Like this is what I think a grape drink would taste like. It tastes like grape candy melted <laughs> into uh, with water and delicious little chewy coconut jellies. This would be a wonderful chaser with soju. Not that I'm encouraging drinking, safe drinking only. If you're over the age of 21, almost forgot. It's not 18. Isn't it 18 in other countries? Okay. Mogu Mogu. Peach flavored drink with natto, nata de coco. It's the little details for me. All right, let's go. Mm. Ooh, it smells so good. It smells like a peach candle. Yum! These little jelly inside. They're amazing. They're so soft. How do they make it so soft? Oh, it's, it's actually a product of Thailand. You know why I really like this? Because it's not too sweet. So refreshing. If you love peach flavor anything, you're really gonna love this. Next item. Mm -mm. They have this bakery section right here. It's called Blue Angel Cafe and Bakery. There's Madeline's. Look how cute this cookie is. Oh my goodness. They have a bunch of different breads. It looks so good, all of them. And then across from there, there's like a whole section with these roll cakes, crepe cake, oh my gosh. A lot of Japanese items here. There's like these mochi, dango, and then look at there's some taiyaki. Okay, we're gonna have to try that. Oop. Boop, boop, bop, boop. Look how cute these are. We love a taiyaki moment. So these were kind of like tucked away in this little fridge and you even had to ask for assistance in order to get them. Yes. Yeah, so some special ones, huh? This one is straight out from the container, but this one is a little bit more heated because I think there's some sort of custard filling inside, um, and so it'll be a lot gooier. So I'm gonna eat the heated one. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, right in the head. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys ever had honey cake? It tastes like honey cake. Or Costella cake. Tastes like that outer layer. And inside is nice, gooey, warm custard. Mm, that's nice. They aren't freshly made or anything, but they're very, very delicious. So this is what the box looks like. For those of you who are at HMAR, you can look out for it. But there's so many other like cake and desserts in that um, little space. I feel like everything tastes delicious. They're Asian baked desserts, cakes, whatever. It's just so dang good. Like the softness, and the moisture, and the bounce, and the not too sweetness, it's just perfect. Every time I go into like an Asian bakery, I have to get something. Exhibit A, <laughs> I 
I was in Chinatown the other day, uh, grocery shopping, and I had to get a, a little pineapple bread. I couldn't resist. I also got some egg tarts. Couldn't resist, you guys. Ugh, just love carbs. Uh, carbs. Okay, anyways. Let's end the video, yes, okay. Well, that was a wonderful little eating tour of HMAR and all the wonderful hot foods you can get at that grocery store. Of course, I think every HMAR is a little different. I heard that there's an HMAR now with a food court, like there's a HMAR food court or something. Take me there. HMAR, are you watching? Take me there. So hopefully there's an HMAR around you. You guys let me know what kind of hot foods you guys have. If the section kind of looks like, you know, the HMAR in this video or if it's a little different. This is not the only HMAR video we're doing. We're definitely gonna do a proper grocery haul through their frozen food section. But because there's so much, I have to figure out a way to like separate it. Like maybe we do like a dumplings one. Then there's like a noodles one. Or we can split it up into meals like appetizers, main and a dessert. I'll figure it out, okay? But I'll get you guys a proper HMAR grocery haul video. Videos. Okay, now it's the part of the video. You already know what I'm gonna say, where I turn it back to you and ask which of the items that we tried today, would you love to try? I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Ooh, give this video a thumbs up. Love you, bye. Mwah.